Welcome back to ECE 320A. Today what we are talking about are the different kinds of configurations that are possible in three-phase power systems. And all of those arise as a result of whether or not you have Y or delta configurations at the source and or load. Those configurations will then provide us with different relationships on the line voltage, phase voltage, line current, and phase current, and we'll try to make sure that it's clear what we're referring to based on the configuration structure and the phrase that is used in the discussion. That will lead us then naturally into transforming between sources and loads that might be interconnected in Y or delta configurations between the two. All of this allows us to convert any of these configurations back into a standard YY configuration. And once we have it in the YY configuration, we know how to, if it's balanced, we can then analyze the single phase equivalent and then if we know all of these transformation relationships, we can determine whatever, whatever values or variables are being asked for, be those voltages or currents, and we may even want powers, obviously, and we can then calculate those also. We'll then talk about the transformations of source. Maybe we'll give you a quiz at that point. We'll talk about load transformations. We'll look at the load currents when we have a delta configured load and that then gives rise to phase currents that are different actually than the line currents and we'll try to derive those relationships. Hopefully we will have time to talk about total complex, total complex power expressions, total because we might be then referring to all three phases or the power in all three phases. Let's get started for today with the three phase configurations and these will be somewhat stick figure like and hopefully that will then allow you to see why we call YWHY, why we call this the YWYE YY configuration. The left hand side is typically the source side and the source side then has the lowercase terminals. We will connect that to the load side which has the uppercase variables associated with it. And this now YY configuration is really a stick figure illustration of the more specific where we might have or we will have the source voltages in all three phases and in particular this one would be the A prime N where this node is now the A prime node that is then begging the idea that we have the generator impedance Z sub G A and we have all, we have that in all three phases and if it's balanced they all are equal to each other. We could also have transmission line impedances which we might then label Z sub L and if it's in the A phase we subscript that with an A. We can also have impedances at the load in each of the three different phases. The A phase would then be, let's say, capital Z sub A. The B phase is capital Z sub B. C phase, etc., with the neutral terminal being capital N. Once we have these identified, we are now able to start talking about this current between little a and big A and that's now the line current in the A phase. We also have a A phase current at the load across that 
a phase impedance, C sub A, which is V sub A in, but we can also talk about a line voltage in the A phase, which goes from the A terminal to the B terminal on the load side. This is now V sub AB, with this being the positive lead of your measuring instrument and that being the negative lead of your measuring instrument. That now is different, that line voltage, I hope it's clear that that's not equivalent to the A phase voltage, but it is the line voltage at the A phase is V sub AB, but that's not equal to V sub capital A capital N, meaning in a Y configuration, your line voltage is not equal to your phase voltage. But in the Y configuration, if you look at the load side, you can see that the A phase current is actually going directly through the A phase impedance, Z sub A, directly. And in that case, then, for the Y configuration, your line current is, in fact, equal to your phase current. In this Y configuration, I'm not sure I want to circle that, so I'll remove that, but that line current is actually the current passing through the transmission line. And in this case, it's also the phase going through Z sub A. And since that's the same current in the Y configuration, the Y current, the line current is equal to the phase current. Let's now look at a different interconnection structure. And in particular, let's now look at the Y to delta configuration. Again, if I do this in a stick figure fashion, and the first variable Y is the source side. Here is my A terminal, here is my C terminal, here's my B terminal, here's my A terminal, my C terminal, and my B terminal at the load, and I can now interconnect those. And I'm not going to include all of the generator values, et cetera, that are included there. But I might go back at this point and just answer some typical questions that might arise. For example, somebody might ask about the phase voltage at the source in this YY configuration. The phase voltage in this source is actually V sub A prime N. So in this case, this particular phase voltage at the source is V sub A prime N, whereas the line voltage in the A phase at the source is V sub A B. And those are not the same value. But if it's balanced, the phase voltages will have the same magnitudes for each of the phases. They will just be different phases in terms of their angular relationship. We can also talk about the 
line voltage of the A phase, and that really depends on whether you're talking about the source side or the load side, and in general, those are different unless you do not have any line, transmission line impedance. If your Z sub L's are zero, then the line voltage at the source terminals and the load terminals would be equal. But in general, they are not, and so if somebody talks about the line voltage, you really need to worry about, are they talking about the source side or the sending side, or are they talking about the receiving side line voltage or the load side terminal if they're talking about the line voltage. Those are some distinctions that you need to make when discussing these different configurations. In this particular configuration, in the second configuration, which is the Y delta configuration, we can easily draw on our diagram the transmission line current, and that's now the line current in general is how it's briefly described. Here is I sub BB, and here is I sub CC. But I hope that it's clear that those currents are not the same as the currents flowing through the different phases at the load. For example, here, the A phase load current, and that's now a phase current, is I sub AB. The B phase current at the load would be I sub BC. And in the C phase, in the load, it's now I sub C A bar. Now, if we talk about the delta at configuration at the load, I hope it's clear that if I now say, what's the phase voltage at the load. Well, at the load, the phase voltage is going in the A phase is going from the A terminal to the B terminal. That's the phase voltage because that would be the voltage dropped across the impedance in that phase. Well, in this case, the phase voltage for the delta configured load is actually equal to the line voltage. But the phase current for the A phase, we were denoting that I sub AB, that is not equal to the line current, which for the A phase would be I sub AA. That now allows us to talk about these definitions, or hopefully it's a little bit more clear when we start talking about these definitions relative to what is a phase voltage, what is a phase current, and that if you look at the left hand side here in red, those phase variables, voltage or current, depend on the configuration that you're dealing with. The phase voltage is the voltage across a particular phase impedance or phase source, and that's going to depend then on how that is interconnected. The phase current is the current through a particular phase impedance or phase source. And hopefully that's clear that that's not necessarily the same as the line voltage or the line current, depending on the configuration structure. The line voltage and the line current, as described in or clearly trying to communicate in red on the left, those variables or those quantities, the line voltage and the line current, do not depend on the configuration meaning you can refer to the transmission line current 
and the line voltage across two terminals at the load or the source without knowing what's hidden behind those terminals. Behind those two terminals you might have a Y configuration or a delta configuration but you can still talk about the voltage between those two terminals without having to identify the particular configuration that you are looking at. But the phase voltage and the phase current are dependent on the configuration. Let's see if that is a little bit more clear as we identify these last two interconnection structures. If we look at now the delta Y configuration, again the first ex variable in that description is the source side and the second Y is the load side. Let's say this is now our A phase and this is our A phase. We connect those together. Now let's say this is our C phase and this is now our B phase. That you can see then if somebody wanted to say something about this particular configuration hopefully it's clear that the line current is the same as the phase current in the load in the A phase but it's not the same as the current the A phase current at the source. Conversely, the line voltage at the load terminals, if I wanted to talk about the line voltage between terminals A and B, that's not the same as the A phase voltage in the A phase. That's what you have to keep clear when people are talking about these different configurations. Lastly, we have the delta-delta configuration. And I hope then in this case it's clear that the line current is not the same as the phase current in either the load or the source side of that interconnected structure. However, the line voltage either at the source or at the load is the same as the A phase source voltage or the A phase load voltage. I hope that is clear and some observations that you can make which I've already I think made but let's just be clear on that. For the Y configuration either source or load, what we can say is that the line current does in fact equal the phase current for a Y configuration, but the line voltage does not equal the phase voltage. Conversely, if we look at the delta configuration, what we've been able to see with the delta configuration is that the line current is not the same as the phase current, but the line voltage with a delta configuration is equal to the phase voltage.
let's now talk about transformations. Now that we see that it might be convenient to be able to convert between y's and deltas, let's look at different transformations and in particular let's start with a y to delta voltage transformation. And this is now going to be at the source. What we're really referring to then is if somebody gives you the A phase voltage at the source and I'm now neglecting the source impedance, what is the line voltage of the A phase at the source? Let's sketch a picture. We now have this V sub A in, here's our neutral terminal. If I'm neglecting the generator impedances, then I can just draw a blank line out from the terminal of the generator to the terminal of the device, which is the A terminal there. Let's say this is now our B terminal, our B phase. And for completeness, we could have our C phase. The A phase voltage is V sub A in. We want to know what is the A phase line voltage in terms of A phase phase voltage. In this particular case, we can actually find that by simply writing a KVL equation. If we write a KVL equation, let's say that I now start at the little n terminal and I go vertically up. I'm going to then go minus V sub A in. I then hit the little A terminal and now I'm coming through what I've defined to be my positive terminal of the line voltage V sub A B and now I come into the positive terminal of the B phase voltage and return back to the neutral terminal so the by KVL those three voltages need to sum to zero. That relationship based on KVL says that the line voltage in the A phase, which is by convention, capital V sub little a little b bar, that's just equal to the A phase voltage V sub little a little n minus V sub little b little n. Now, in order to relate the A phase voltage to the A phase line voltage, we need to be told, are we dealing with a positive or negative phase sequence? For illustration purposes, to begin with, let's just assume that we have a positive phase sequence, and let's just let the A phase be our reference phase, our phase voltage meaning let's now call this V sub phi at zero degrees. If we have a positive phase sequence, then we're dealing with this diagram and we're assuming it's balanced and these lines should all be the same length. Then as we're walking around in a clockwise fashion, this positive phase sequence is A, B, C. We hit A, B, and then C and they are 120 degrees apart, it's balanced, so they split this 360 degrees equally, which allows us then to say that the B phase, V sub B in, is the same magnitude, it's balanced, but it's now 120 degrees behind the A phase. For completeness, if we needed it, V sub C in is now V sub phi 
at an angle 120 behind the B phase or 120 ahead of the A phase. To find the line voltage for the A phase, we now simply apply or use this relationship together with the assumption that we're dealing with a positive phase sequence. Meaning we now can say that V sub AB is equal to V sub AN, which is V sub phi at zero degrees, where V sub phi is just a number, a scalar, minus V sub little b little n, which is V sub phi at minus 120 degrees. And if you go through the algebra with this, this is now just V sub phi, since we're taking that times the cosine of zero plus J sine of zero, the sine of zero is zero. If we now subtract minus V sub phi times the cosine of minus 120 degrees plus J sine of minus 120 degrees. If we go through that algebra, this now ends up being something like minus one half. This is now this sine of minus 120 degrees is minus the square root of three over two. So that we have one plus one half For the real part, we have a minus, a minus square root of three over two. So we have a plus j square root of three over two. All of that times v sub phi. And from this, we can see that we have one and a half plus j square root of three over two. Times v sub phi. But this, if we square both sides and or the real part and the imaginary part and take the square root, we end up with the square root of three. The angle of this now is an angle made by roughly going vertical 0.86 and going horizontal 1.5. That's an angle of 30 degrees. And all of that is then scaling the original magnitude of our phase voltage which really that was a phase voltage V sub phi at an angle of zero. So we could write this as the line voltage of the A phase, V sub AB, is a scaled version of the A phase voltage, V sub AN, and it's scaled, it's increased by a magnitude of the square root of three and it's advanced in phase by 30 degrees. That's what happens for a positive phase sequence. If we collect all of that together, and if we did the same kind of manipulation or algebra for the other phases, we would see that they are all changed by a scaling of the square root of three at an angle of 30 degrees from their respective phase voltage. V sub BC is the B phase. V sub CA is the C phase. And again, all of these are for the positive AB C phase sequence. And that's the relationship between the Y configuration and the delta configuration. If somebody needed to convert between Y and delta, they would just have to scale these Y values by a scaling factor of the square root of three and change the angle by 30 degrees. You probably might be interested in what happens if you now had a negative phase sequence. You could do the same analysis. You would end up with exactly the same expressions in terms of V sub AB would be V sub AN minus V sub BN. It's just with a negative phase sequence, A and B, those phase voltages are different. 
the B phase now is minus 240 behind the A phase, or 120 ahead. And this now negative phase sequence, which is the ACB sequence, gives rise to the following relationships. Now you have V sub AB equaling, again it's going to be larger, but now it's going to be delayed or changed in angle by minus 30 degrees from the original A phase sequence. And this then is consistent with the different phase voltages and line voltages. They're all scaled by the same scaling factor, square root of 3, and they're all changed in angle by 30 degrees from their phase voltage in the Y configuration. What I would like you to do now is work on the following quiz and see if any of this is making sense. Suppose you are now given V sub A n being equal to 10 at an angle of 20 degrees, and that's in voltage, and I'm going to assume that's an RMS voltage. Let's say that you are also told that this is a negative phase sequence system. And this, obviously by the notation, V sub A n is associated with a Y configuration. That should be clear from the notation. We're going from the A terminal to a neutral conductor. And what you need to do now is find the B phase line voltage. Now, you can hit pause and see what you can do with that particular quiz. What did you end up with for an answer? Now, I'm assuming you've actually solved this. What did you get for a solution? First, what you might want to do is obtain the B phase of the voltage that you're dealing with. You know that it's a negative phase sequence. That was given. That means you have this ACB relationship. Here's A, here's C, and here's B as we're walking around this in a clockwise manner, meaning if we're given V sub A n is 10 at 20 degrees, so I didn't draw that correctly, you can rotate it now 20 degrees, you know that V sub B n is going to be 120 degrees ahead of that, or and that's an RMS voltage for V sub B n. Now what we know is how to convert that to the line value of the B phase. We know that we simply scale by square root of 3 in magnitude, and since it's a negative phase sequence, we take away 30 degrees in the angle, and that now scales the B phase value, or phasor. So that we now have 10 times the square root of 3 at an angle of 140 minus 30, or 110 degrees volts RMS. If we wanted to sketch that a little bit better, we would have then our A phase is right here at an angle of 20 degrees. Here's V sub A n. We then have our C phase 120 degrees 
behind that so that now we are going to be where with respect to V sub C in. So now if we take away 120 from that, we're now at 100 degrees here, which is a little bit different from vertical. This is now minus 100 degrees. That's V sub C in. And now we are 120 degrees beyond that. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to draw that very accurately. But here is now our V sub B in. And that is at a value of 140 degrees. And what we calculated was the line voltage. It needs to be a little bit longer. It's going to be a square root of 3 factor larger, and it's going to be at 110 degrees. So here is now our B phase line voltage at this angle that's 30 degrees behind the phase voltage, the B phase voltage, which is V sub B in, or this is now 110 degrees at a magnitude of 10 square root of 3. That's now the answer that I hope you were able to obtain. Let's now talk about transformations. Though That was then the source transformations, how to convert voltages between phase and line when we had a Y configuration. Let's now look at load transformations when we have delta and Y interconnections, which if you want to see the general case, I would refer you to section 9.6 in the textbook. We will quickly talk about this and really concentrate more on the balanced situation. Here, what we want to do is talk about what happens when we have a Y or a delta configuration. Well, if we looked at just from the terminal's perspective, the A, B, C terminals, we would see the same impedance. So the assumption here is the impedance seen between two terminals should be the same. And the other point to keep track of or to be clear on is that all unused terminals are then hanging or those are going to be at an infinite impedance. Let's now look at what happens when we want to take a Y to delta connected load. For example, let's say that we now have our A terminal and that we will then label as in the following way. We'll have three impedances. Z1, Z2, and Z3. And those will be then compared to what we want to do is take that to another interconnected behavior 
or structure between the three same terminals or consistent terminals and that's now the Y configuration. Let's now look at the general case between two particular terminals. Let's just look at the impedance that one sees in the delta configuration for the impedance Z sub A, B. For Z sub A, B, if we look at what we see here, we can see that this particular impedance is really, if C is now floating or hanging or at an infinite impedance, we now could think of this as these two are in series, but those two series connections of Z2 and Z3 are in parallel with Z sub 1 meaning if we wanted the impedance between Z sub A, B, we now have Z sub 1 in parallel with the series combination of Z sub 2 and Z sub 3, and there we have the product of our impedances divided by the sum of the impedances. In the Y configuration, if we looked at the impedance between A terminals A and B. C is floating, that's at an infinite impedance. We simply see that we have Z sub A plus Z sub B between terminals A and B. That's the general case. If we now specialize this to where we have balanced loads or impedances, then we know that all of these impedances in the delta configuration are equal, so let's just refer to those as Z sub delta. The Y, Z sub A is equal to Z sub B is equal to Z sub C, that's let's just say equal to Z sub Y. If we're dealing with the same impedance between A and B, then we can set those equal to each other, meaning for the, we are now trying to relate these two impedance values, the Z sub delta and the Z sub Y. What we have then in the Y side, we have Z sub delta, which was Z sub 1 over Z sub 2 plus Z sub 3 all over the sum of those three, but they're all equal and we just agreed to call those Z sub delta, and those are equal to the Y side, which was Z sub A plus Z sub B, but those were equal to just this common impedance Z sub Y. Now if we look at this, we now on the left hand side, and the right hand side, we have two Z sub Y's. On the left hand side, we had two Z deltas upstairs. Those twos can cancel. And one of these Z deltas on the left can cancel with the numerator and denominator. And now we can see that the relationship that we have is that ZY is actually less by a factor of three, the value of the impedance Z sub delta meaning if we wanted to convert delta to y, we would simply divide the delta impedance by 3, and that would give us our y conversion. Or if we wanted to go the other direction, if we had the y configuration and it was balanced, and we wanted to obtain the equivalent delta configuration impedance, then we could say that z sub delta is just a factor of 3 bigger than z sub y. One way that I like to remind myself of that relationship if I forget 
I just sketch this picture. There's the delta configuration, and that's then related to the y configuration. And which is outside of the other? Well, the delta is outside the y, or what I say is now bigger than y, which now allows me to say that if I know that there's this factor of 3 relationship, and if I sketch that picture, now I know, oh, delta is bigger than y, so I know that z delta is 3 z sub y, or if I wanted to go the other way now, I know that I simply scale or divide z delta by 3 in order to get z sub y. And that's how you can now convert your impedances between deltas and y's. Let's now talk about what we have in terms of when the phase currents are not the same as line currents. And that's going to happen when we have what kind of a configuration? When we have a balanced delta load, then our phase currents in the load are not going to be the same as the line currents. So let's talk about the phase current in a balanced delta load. The picture that we can sketch for that is now the following. Here is our delta load. Let's say that this is now our A phase terminal. Here's our B terminal, and here's our C terminal. We've now defined these different currents. There's our line current in the A phase. Here's our B current in the B phase. And finally, here is our C phase line current. But those are not the same as the A phase load current or the B phase current in the load or the C phase current in the load. What we want to do is find a relationship so that we can transform between line currents and phase currents when we have a delta configuration that we're dealing with. What is this then relationship? between the line and phase currents. Always go back to the basics. If it seems like you're losing track of what's going on, just go back to the basics and we can now relate or use some of our fundamental relationships. And in particular, in this case, we have our KCL that we can use. If we apply KCL at terminal A, we will have a way of establishing the relationship between the line currents, which are the transmission line currents, and the phase currents for a delta configured load. Here we have the currents going into A are I sub little a capital A and I sub capital C capital A. And leaving terminal A is I sub capital A capital B. What we want to do is relate the line current to the phase current, and in this case, our line current is I sub A A, and that now says that I sub little a capital A is capital I sub capital A capital B minus I sub capital A capital, or I'm sorry, 
minus capital I sub capital C capital A. Description wise, what is what? Will this I sub capital A B is the A phase phase current I sub little a capital A is also an A phase, but this is the A phase line current. So make sure terminology, you don't get all turned around with what's going on. But hopefully it's clear. And now what do we know about these different quantities? Let's say that now somebody tells us that we have an ABC phase sequence. What kind of a sequence is that? Well, that's our positive phase sequence. If we now are looking for the line current in terms of our phase currents, and we now have I sub AB, let's say that's our reference current. That's now, let's say, a magnitude of I sub phi at zero degrees. This is now the I sub A, capital A, capital B. We subtract from that the C phase, phase current, which has the same magnitude, we're assuming balance, but now in this positive phase sequence, the C phase is leading the A phase by 120 degrees. Again, if we do our phasor algebra, our complex algebra on this, we can convert that 0 to 1, and we can convert this 120 to be cosine of 120 plus J sine of 120, and end up with the following relationship with respect to our line current and the phase current for a delta configured load. This is now going to be a square root of 3 bigger. It will be behind by 30 degrees and this will now be scaled by I sub phi which that's related directly to I sub AB because of that zero degree angle and for that reason, we can see then that the relationship between the A phase line current and the A phase phase voltage is this scaling factor, which should look familiar, but the angle is now a little different because now we're talking about currents. What we need to conclude then is we can say that the line current is actually behind or lags the phase current by 30 degrees, but the line current is bigger than the phase current. And is a square root of 3 larger than the phase current. And you can do that for all of these others, which is the ACB, ABC, etc. I'll leave that to you to relate to one another and also to talk about the graphical or phasor relationships between those phase currents and line currents in a delta configured load. Quickly then to talk about the total load power If we now are dealing with a balanced system, suppose somebody now gives us P sub phi. 
a single phase power. What do we know P sub phi is? Well, now it's just given to us, and now if they ask for the total real power, if it's balanced, we know that that's now 3 times P sub phi. Likewise, if somebody now gives us Q sub phi, then the total reactive power is just three of those individual phase reactive powers, which now allows us to say or conclude that the total complex power, which is this phaser or triangular relationship, is just three times the phase complex power. And you need to remember that your power in a phase could be related to the phase voltage times the line voltage. I'm sorry, phase voltage times the phase current times the cosine of the angle between those two. Meaning, we know, I hope, that P sub phi is the phase voltage, and if we talked about the A phase in a Y configuration, that would be V sub A in times I sub A A, the magnitude of those, times the cosine of the impedance of the A phase. Meaning this is now a Y configuration that we are talking about or using now to describe, but we could, we'll talk about this later in terms of how do we relate this to line values of current and voltage. But in a Y configuration, this is now the A phase load impedance voltage. This is now the magnitude of the A phase current, and the real component of the power, or the average power, is the voltage times the current times the cosine of the angle between those two, and that's just the angle of the impedance. So this is, you could think of as theta sub voltage minus theta sub current is theta sub z. And we'll pick up at that point in the next lecture.